I'm going to be comparing, reading the same book, Wolf Hall, which I bought on four different e-readers. First is the, uh, the Sony reader here, and it's the pocket edition. Second is the Kobo, which is the Borders e-reader. Third is the Nook from Barnes & Noble. And fourth is the Kindle from Amazon. I want to start out by pointing out that I had to purchase this book on each of the four different devices. There's uh, some talk sometimes that the Kindle is a closed device and the others somehow are open because they use EPUB. The fact is that the publishers of books like Wolf Hall, a very popular novel by Hilary Mantel, uh, use digital rights management so if you buy it on the Sony uh, you can't easily use, uh, read the book on a different device and uh, it, it may be possible but I've tried it and believe me it's not easy if it is possible. So anyway I bought this book for $12.99 which was the price which the publishers uh, have uh, established under the agency model at each of these four ebook stores so that I could compare reading it on four different devices. I'm going to start out by taking a look at the two devices which have uh, which are less expensive and have fewer capabilities, and that's the, uh, the Sony Reader here and the Kobo. The, neither of these has a wireless ability to download books, so you have to buy the book, get it on your computer, and then move it to the device. Neither one of them has a dictionary or the ability to uh, write notes or highlight sections. Uh, I think the one thing about the Sony Reader which is significant is, I don't know if you can see it here, but on the diagonal of the e-ink screen, which is identical on uh, each of these devices, it's 5 inches diagonal versus 6 inches diagonal on the Kobo. I found that that gives a noticeably better, more pleasing amount of text to read between page turns on the Kobo uh, compared with the Sony. Uh, they're similar size, in fact they're identical size, 7.8 ounces for each of these devices, but I think the Kobo is a, uh, it's a more pleasing design. It's got this nice soft back which feels good on the hands, and it has kind of a playful button that advances the pages. The Sony is much more sort of computerish. It's, it's uh, not metallic, but it's got the, the sort of computer feel to it, and uh, it has one advantage in that things happen more quickly on the Sony. A real drawback of the Kobo is the speed to get a book started after the device has been sleeping takes a noticeably longer time and also even to get to different chapters. But all in all I think I'm going to set the Sony reader aside because that smaller screen size really bothered me and uh, I just kind of liked the, the Kobo. It's, it's got a playful, sort of more bookish design than the Sony. So as we go into the next round, in which we'll put the Kobo up against the uh, Nook and the Kindle, uh, we'll, we're down to three in our tournament. The difference between the Kobo and the Nook and the Kindle uh, is pretty dramatic in terms of uh, what you, how you can read with it. If all you want to do is read a book, the, the Kobo works great. It's got the e-ink screen and it's, uh, uh, as I said, it's a very pleasing form factor to it. The problem is that if you're someone who, when you're reading, you like to highlight, you like to take notes, you like to look up words, you, you like to do anything other than just read the page, the Kobo simply can't do it. There's no dictionary, there's no way to enter uh, a note on a passage or to highlight a passage. All you can do is read the book. So that sets it in a different category from both the, the Nook and the Kindle. For myself, I'm quite an active reader. Sometimes I'm reading for the purposes of preparing a book review and I just always have been someone who highlighted when I was reading print books. So although, you know, some days at the beach when all I want to do is read something, the Kobo is fine. I'm going to set it aside 
uh, in this next round because it simply doesn't do things which I like to have available, especially the dictionary. I love to look up words and to have to go back to a, a separate dictionary when I'm reading an ebook just seems to sort of defeat the purpose. So going into the finals of our tournament, it will be the Nook versus the Kindle. Now the Nook and the Kindle are similar uh, in their e-ink screens, same dimension, six inch on the diagonal for each of them. What's radically different in them is the controls. The Kindle has actual physical buttons that you use to type words that you're looking for or whatever and the Nook has a, a touch screen. In, in some ways it looks like a more modern design. The problem with it in its actual use is that it's tough to sometimes get it to work. It's, not, it's much less sensitive to uh, touch than say the, the keyboard on the iPad and I find that very often when I'm touching it trying to make something happen I've got to touch it twice. So uh, it's, a, it's a pleasing design that, that just doesn't seem quite up to snuff in the way it works. The other difference in the Nook and the uh, Kindle, you know, the, the Nook is noticeably heavier. It weighs 11.6 ounces and the Kindle, the, the uh, current generation Kindle weighs 10.2 so it it weighs uh, uh, 1.4 ounces less than the Nook and the new Kindle is going to weigh even less than that. 8. 5 ounces or 8.6 ounces. Uh, I, that w extra weight on the Nook is, is something that I think is really distinguishes the two devices. It has a, a, a nicer back. It's sort of a soft back. I think the new Kindle is going to duplicate that and the Kindle 2 has sort of a shiny back. Now the way I'm going to conduct the finals of this tournament is I'm going to put the, the Nook and the Kindle through five tests. And in each test, I'm going to show you exactly how you do the test on one versus the other. And the tests are going to be to look up a word in the dictionary. Second is going to be to highlight a passage and to find it. Third is going to be to look up the name of a character in the book that uh, we're reading. Fourth is to look up uh, you know, something in Wikipedia if we want to learn something more in the book. And the uh, fifth is going to be text-to-speech. To look up a word on the Nook, and the word that we're going to look up is uh, here, it's Wainscot, and it's over here on the Kindle, Wainscot. This is in uh, this is a uh, great novel that's set at the time of King Henry VIII. So in the Nook, you have to wake up the touchpad that gives you your controls. You have to scroll, uh, move your finger so that look up word is visible tap look up word and you'll see that the cursor is up here in the upper left and you have to use a virtual uh, sort of directional pad here to move the cursor down so it's in front of the word and I've found this a, a pretty difficult process to to master on the Nook it seems like there's a delay between moving this cursor from when you touch it now see I overshot it so now I've got to go back up and now it's hopped over here to the right side and eventually we are going to move the cursor in front of the word wainscot and there we've got it in front of the word wainscot so now we press this uh, item here it says look up and then there's quite a uh, takes a little bit of time but we get to wainscot I think that was faster than the first time I did it before I had the camera on because it's going to the same word. A uh, pretty thorough uh, definition, it's a two-page definition that comes up when we, we go to Wayne Scott. Um, and then, if, then when we're done and we want to go back to the book, we go back down to the panel, click OK, and we're back in the book. Now, let's do the same process on the Kindle. The Kindle to uh, the Kindle, it doesn't show a cursor uh, in, unless you start moving the five-way controller here, but to since the word is uh, toward the lower part of the page, I'm going to push the, the five-way controller up and that will show the cursor here and I just move it up four lines. It's very responsive compared to that virtual uh, keypad. This, this button 
moves the cursor back and forth, it seems instantaneously with the actual movement. There's no delay. So it, now I've got the cursor in front of the word wainscot. With the Kindle, that's all I have to do because down here at the bottom of the screen, I'm seeing uh, a, an abbreviated form of the definition, which says that it's an area of wooden paneling on the lower part of the walls of a room, wainscot. If I want to see the full definition at this point, I press the return key on the Kindle keypad, and that will bring up the full definition, which again is about two pages as it was uh, on, the, on the Nook. And then to get back to the book, uh, you simply press uh, back. Now, I, I uh, find that this is a, a much easier process on the Kindle, and also the Kindle has uh, more, several, a couple, I think it's about 10 or 20,000 more words in it than the uh, Nook's dictionary, so uh, there's times when I will find a definition on the Kindle but not on the Nook. But the main thing is the ease of moving to the word and the smaller number of keystrokes to get the definition. And for that, I'm going to give the uh, test of the dictionary we're going to have as the, the winner there is going to be uh, the winner there is the Kindle. The second test is to highlight a passage. And I'm going to highlight the same passage in both the Nook and the Kindle. To uh, highlight a passage, you have to wake up this uh, touchpad again. And then you have to uh, go to Highlights and Notes and then you have to go to add a highlighter note. At that point the virtual uh, directional pad shows up again. Same difference, the same difficulty to try to get that thing to work with its delay. But I'm going to go over to here to highlight this passage which is one that maybe I might want to uh, remember. Once I've got the cursor to the beginning of the passage I hit start selection and then I'm going to move down using the cursor uh, and I'm just going to end up highlighting this one sentence. So I'm working the virtual cursor till I've got I'm over there. On the Kindle I'm going to highlight essentially the same passage but I'm going to actually make it a little longer passage to illustrate one difference between the two. I'm moving the cursor the same way with the five-way controller which is the more responsive way to highlight. I'm starting this passage here. What he senses is a great net spreading around him, a web of favors done in favors. In other words, the passage that I want to highlight extends from uh, one page to the next. On the Nook, you wouldn't be able to do that. Your passage has to all be on one page. I'm at the bottom of this page, I slide the cursor one step over, and then I get to that same, those who want access to the king expect to pay for it, and no one has better access than he. So I've uh, been highlighting it as the cursor moves. Now all I have to do to select this passage is to press the five-way, and now it's selected. There's a, a line under it. A big difference in highlighting between the Nook and the Kindle is what do you do if you want to find the passage that you've highlighted? On the Nook, you, it, the only way you will ever see that passage again that you highlighted is if in doing next page or previous page you happen to come to the page and you'll see it there. There's no way to search for all of your highlighted passages uh, other than just to find it page by page. The uh, Kindle, on the other hand, has the ability to go to Menu and then View My Notes and Marks. Now this will show, uh, I'm going to see, take a shortcut here. You're, you're looking at a list now of every passage in Wolf Hall that I have highlighted and I can scroll through the list and highlight any particular highlight, press the controller and then I will go into the book at that uh, point. Another even more powerful way to see the highlights is on the web and I'll show you what that looks like now. 
In order to see the highlight that I just made on Wolf Hall on the web, I just go to kindle.amazon.com, which you see here on my iPad. You log into your Kindle account at that point. This is bringing up the list of all the books that I have on uh, my Kindle account. I've got 204 books. To find the annotations, the highlights I have for Wolf Hall, I'm just going to type in Wolf, and it will bring up that book. And when I touch the name of the book, this says that I have uh, six highlighted passages in Wolf Hall, including the one that we just did. I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, what he senses is a great net spreading about him. That to me is a huge difference in the highlighting between the Nook and the Kindle because I can use the highlights that I make, plus Notes works a very similar way, and actually find uh, the, the annotations that I'm making on the book with the Kindle, uh, and I can't at all on the Nook. It's really just like a needle in a haystack. I have to page through every page of the book to come across places where I've left a highlight or a note. So for any kind of active reading, uh, preparing a book review, or anything where you're really going to need to get back to the highlights that you've made in a book, the Kindle is clearly the, the only way to go. There's, of course, uh, another advantage uh, in the latest software update for the Kindle, which is that if I highlight a passage from the Kindle, I can uh, enter it as a, as a tweet or an update on my Facebook page, and then it automatically goes out there. So there's a little bit of a social media part of highlighting as well. So I'm going to say that for the second test, the test is won by the Kindle highlighting a passage. The third test that I'm going to talk about now is to look up the name of a character. There's basically no way to do this with the Nook. There is a find command which I tried to enter the name of a character, uh, Helen Barry, and it brought up no, uh, no results for finding that character. I could enter B-A-R-R-E and I would come up with instances of barrel. But the big problem with this is that you don't get a list of all the, of the items found. You simply get the ability to scroll back or forward to the next or the previous uh, instance of what you're looking for. Uh, I tried to call Nook support to see if there was something I was missing here. Uh, and it was a bit of a long wait, so I, I didn't do it. But I, I'm confident that, that uh, there is no way to get a list of the instances of a mention of a character's name or any other term in the book. On the Kindle, this is actually quite easy, and it's one of the things that I've come to really appreciate about reading, particularly a novel on the Kindle. Wolf Hall is a good example. There are a ton of characters, and there's about... Uh, most of the way through the book, one of the characters that's important, Rafe, announces to Thomas Cromwell that he's been married. I have been married half a year, Rafe says, and no one knows, but you know now, I have married Helen Barry. Now, I'm going to show you how easy it is to find out who Helen Barry is. So here's the place where Helen Barry is mentioned in the book. I'm going to use the five-way controller to highlight the name Helen Barry, and then a little handy uh, shortcut, I'm simply going to press the space bar and that pulls up Helen Barry in uh, this area down here at the bottom of the page. I eliminated the quote. Then I go over to find, press that, and now what I'm going to get is a list of all of the mentions of Helen Barry in the entire book going back to the first mention which is pretty handy because that turns out to be a list of characters in the book, and that's where I find Helen Barry, a poor woman taken in by the household. If I want to see what happens to that character through the book, I simply go back, and there are three pages of mentions, so I can go forward chronologically in the book and find out all of the uh, instances where this character has appeared. That's, a, uh, I think, quite a powerful tool of reading in the Kindle, and I use it a lot. Uh, I, I like to be able to figure out who these characters are, and if there's some kind of a, an element of the plot, or particularly a character, I can go back and find an entire list in the book, and that makes it very easy. So on the third test, we're going to give the Kindle the win on, on that one, ease of looking up a character.
So the next, next test for the Kimball in the Nook is to look up something in Wikipedia. Often when I'm reading, I, if I come across something, particularly an item in history that I'm not totally familiar with, I like to check it out and look it up. And this is something I used to do when I was reading print books. I had a Columbia Encyclopedia. And I was pretty active in turning to it whenever I can. Now, the uh, Nook has a way to do this, provided that you are on a Wi-Fi network because what you can do is leave the book and then go to the website and uh, look something up in Wikipedia that way. So what I'm going to use as an example is uh, there's a character here that's mentioned in Wolf Hall, uh, Chapoys. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. C-H-A-P-U-Y-S is the actual historical figure which uh, uh, appears in the book. Here's a this uh, name appears here in Wolf Hall, Chap Chappies, I'm going to call it. And with, to do this, we would uh, get the screen active again. Uh, we'd actually touch this Nook uh, key here and go to the web. Uh, there's the web icon. So we're leaving the book, going into the web, and then we're going to touch this place here where we go to uh, a search and so we're going to search enter in uh, this name Chap Chap Chappies C-H-A-P-U-Y-S uh, now the Nook sort of died on us here this is not not something that's totally unusual so we did something it didn't like, so now we're going to go back in and hope that we will be at the browser, which we're not. We'll start over here. Go to the web. Uh, we're going to hit cancel there. Hit go to search chapters and submit. So we are now searching in Wikipedia for this, the name of this uh, character, and we're finding it. Uh, Eustace Chappies is his name. You'll see I'm having trouble getting that screen to come back. Once I get it, it's a fairly nice rendering of the web page. We're now at Wikipedia, and we're touching that name in Wikipedia and after a while we will see that we get to the Wikipedia page for uh, that particular character Chappies. Now let's see how we do that in the Kindle. On the Kindle there's the same mention of this character Chappies and so I'm going to use the five way to go over to highlight that name and then go one over. Again I'd use this shortcut of hitting the space bar that brings up the name automatically. I don't have to type it. Now I'm going to slide one step over on the five way and then another and then I get to a, a set of options here using the five way. I can search my items, the store, Google, Wikipedia, Dictionary, or the notes I've made. So I'm just going to highlight Wikipedia and press it. Now this is uh, using the 3G because uh, there's no Wi-Fi on this version of the Kindle so it takes a while for it to find it on the 3G. So a benefit of the Kindle here is that I can look up something in Wikipedia whether or not I'm on uh, a Wi-Fi network and the Nook by comparison I have to be on a Wi-Fi. Now on the new Kindles there will be a Wi-Fi only version which would be more comparable to the Nook uh, and there's also going to be a 3G that would have the uh, capabilities of this to use either Wi-Fi or 3G. But I think you can see that uh, even the setting aside the issue of the network availability, in, within the Kindle, the ability to highlight a word or a, a series of terms and then instantly turn that into a search on Wikipedia makes it the preferable tool for looking things up as you're reading. So in the test of uh, look up in Wikipedia, we're going to give Kindle the advantage there in test four.
Test 5 is text-to-speech. There is no text-to-speech on the Nook. I'll show you how it works on the Kindle. I have um, in Wolf Hall here, and I have the cursor set at that same place with that character. I press this button on the keypad, which is also the font size button. And if I move down a couple of items, I turn on text-to-speech. And once it gets started, then it will start reading the book. You know. Chapuyas writes to the emperor about him. His early life remains a mystery, but he is excellent company, and he keeps his household and retainers in magnificent style. He is a master of language, Chapuyas writes, a man of most eloquent address. Text-to-speech is actually not something I use when I'm reading a, a novel. You can tell that voice is not exactly going to be uh, mistaken for someone that's really fun to listen to. But if you were driving and you wanted to listen to this novel in the car with the Kindle hooked up, you could. And there might be other reasons to use text-to-speech. Uh, text-to-speech is not available on all books. It's a publisher's option, and there was controversy when text-to-speech first emerged on the Kindle because some publishers uh, did not want that feature to be activated because they thought it would uh, get in the way of the ability of authors to, to make audiobooks out of their books. But uh, it's, a, it's a pretty handy feature of the Kindle, and it will be in the new Kindles as well. So on the fifth test, uh, text-to-speech, of course, uh, the Kindle is the winner there because there is no text-to-speech on the Nook. So that brings me to declaring a winner in the Wolf Hall Tournament of eBooks. I'm sure you know, based on the sweeping of the five tests, that the Kindle is the winner, in, in my opinion, over the Nook. Now, one thing that's important to point out is by the time you see this, there, there, will be, uh, there may well be a new Nook, and the hardware and software capabilities of the new Nook could uh, bring it more on a par with the abilities uh, to do highlights and notes and find them, text-to-speech, some of the things which I pointed out are not uh, doable here on the Nook as they are to the Kindle. There's also, though, going to be a new Kindle. It's going to be lighter. It's actually going to be very similar in weight uh, to the Kobo, uh, just seven tenths of an ounce heavier than the Kobo, so it's uh, going to be very small and light. The e-ink screen is going to have noticeably a better contrast, easier to read. I've had a chance to see one of the new Kindles, and I know that that's the case. And there are also going to be uh, faster page turns and a number of other improvements uh, over this version of the Kindle, which is the one that I've got available at the time that I make this presentation. So all in all, I think the Kindle is the clear winner of this Wolf Hall tournament of e-readers that I've created. And I've tried to be uh, impartial here. I, anybody that knows my work on the Kindle Chronicles podcast knows that uh, the, the chances I can present myself as a totally uh, objective uh, observer of these uh, uh, devices is, is, is not high. But I will say I've used the Nook, I've bought the Nook, I've bought the other two readers, and uh, I've told myself all along here I'm not sponsored by anybody, and that if there's an e-reader that comes out that does a better job of reading than the Kindle, uh, then I'm all for it and I'll, I'll have the freedom to, to say so. But at this point, uh, for the reasons that I've talked about, I think for serious readers that read the way I do, the, the Kindle is the, the clear winner of the e-reader the e tournament. This is Len Edgerly in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I hope this has been helpful.